This video shows how to quickly solve problems A, B, C, and the next video will be for interactive problem D. Enjoy! Hi, I'm Richter, and this is Google Code Jam 2020 qualification round, which starts in 11, 10, 9 seconds. I survived till 1 am and will try to win. Wish me good luck. Hi, this is Erichta from the future, and I'm here to comment a little bit. The first problem, vertigium, is just this. You're given a square matrix, two-dimensional grid, n by n, and you need to compute the trace. Trace sum of numbers on the main diagonal. First row, first column intersection, second second, and so on. Sum them up, and additionally, for every row and every column, check if there are some repeated numbers there, within this row, within this column. You need to count the number of bed rows, and bad columns, those that contain something repeated. Seems to be seems to be very implementation heavy problem. I mean not really implementation heavy. Just implement what is said. If I insert this value, same for call of J. Then I will count bed rows and bed columns. I believe this is a square. What other value I should say? Okay, uh, is the trace of the matrix just the sum of values on the main diagonal? I didn't really reuse values grid ij later, so I didn't have to create two-dimensional array. It would be enough to just every time create a simple variable x, read x, and insert that in sets, in some case add that to the trace. Is n small enough? It is r and c and long long trace. Rows, but the final time rows. complexity is n square log n, because each element I insert into a set. I could use an ordered set or hash set to get to get rid of logarithm, but whatever. C++, please. And without waiting, let's open the second problem. In the second problem, nesting depth, we are given a sequence of numbers and we need to surround them with brackets so that every number would say in how many brackets it is, how many pairs of brackets surround this number. But we need to minimize the number of brackets used and instead for 2 and 3 it is optimal to do this. Two pairs of brackets surround them both and there is one additional for a 3. We are given a longer sequence and we need to put a lot of brackets like that. And those numbers are actually digits. Their values are from 0 to 9. This time it's not just about implementation. We need to figure something out. Uh, what that will be... Is, does greedy work? Maybe. Is it always possible? Maybe. S is short up to hundred. I 
depth is initially zero, I will go through characters in the input. This is some digit. This is the required depth. Digit minus the current depth. I need to open the brackets. My solution is to go from left to right and greedily decide about brackets. Every time I keep, var I keep variable depth initially equal to zero, but at this moment it would be two, the number of open brackets. After two I see a number three, so I say I need to open one more bracket. Now the depth is three. Then the next number is one, then close two brackets and say the depth is one. One is the number of still open brackets, then for a four I will need to open some more, at the end close a lot of them. And I have variable depth for that. Depth minus digit, I need to close the brackets. And print the digit itself. One last thing. Close all the brackets. and modify the depth. Depth is more like the previous digit. Something wrong with variables, but it compiled. Seems okay, but let's test on uh, like 2401. 2401, okay, and 44. Good. Now I can check the first problem, accept that. Third one. Oh, there are five problems, not three. Parenting, parenting partnering returns. In the third problem, we are given a set of intervals of time and we need to split them between two kids, Cameron and Jamie, so that a kid wouldn't get two tasks that happen at the same moment. I cannot say Cameron get this interval and this one because they intersect. One valid solution here is Cameron, Jamie, Jamie, Cameron, Jamie, Cameron, and here whatever, say Jamie. This will for sure be greedy. Given intervals, split them into two disjoint sets. That's the whole statement. Oh, I didn't need to copy, I prepared the files in advance. From L to R. I will need to sort them. My starting point should be fine. All push back or in place back lr comma i i also need an index to know what to print at the end all and now i will greedily assign them sometimes saying impossible sorting A is when the first guy is available first person 0 B is 0 I will greedily do that for in every element in this low is PP first first high and ID if is let's say false when I want A to take if A is later no, I sorted by starting time then it doesn't really know who, who will take as long as it's possible is it true? is it that easy?
I think so. And the first person will be, let's say, C. If A is smaller or equal low, A is high. Yes, I think so, after I sorted. Answer plus equal the first type. Else if B fits, is available. I expected that maybe I will need to check which one is available later or earlier. So impossible return ID no oh, answer of ID is C. Then I need to create answer over there and characters question mark. Did I create in? No. Seems the same with their output, but I'm scared here. C submit. I will take a look in a moment. Uh, let's see B. Correct. Correct. Cool. I'm very happy. Problem D. In CodeGen system, the leaderboard takes a moment to refresh. So this is a screenshot from a few minutes later. I was third after solving ABC. Watch the next video to see me solving interactive problem D, where I was the fastest even though I needed to install Python <laughs> during the contest, because I didn't have one apparently on my computer. And if you enjoyed this, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Bye!